Hello and welcome to MediPrep. I want to go over wound care management today, uh, especially of importance in an austere environment where you don't have access to things like antibiotics. Um, antibiotics are fine and good, but uh, oftentimes irrelevant and unnecessary when it comes to management of wounds when the wounds are managed early on prior to the onset of infection. So as Benjamin Franklin once said, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That very much applies here into most cases uh, with just about anything medical. So in this case, uh, we have two different products here that I want to go over. Um, both are uh, fairly commonly uh, cited and known for their use in wound care management. And also go over uh, one of the most important things that you can do to effectively um, eliminate uh, the amount of uh, possibility for infection um, by reducing the amount of bacteria and um, other things that can lead to infection in the wound itself. So for starters, I'll go over two different products. One is hydrogen peroxide, a product that uh, many are familiar with. In fact, um, any, many of you, if not all of you, have got a bottle of this in your uh, cabinet. And um, unfortunately, it's uh, probably the most misunderstood of products when it comes to first aid as well. Uh, just about every bottle that I've ever seen has got the words for first aid use or something to that effect written on the bottle itself. Um, unfortunately, that's very misleading. As it turns out, hydrogen peroxide really is of no benefit um, as a cleansing agent. In fact, in terms of lawn care management wounds can actually be um, more deleterious, more harmful to the wound and its ability to heal over time as well because of its cytotoxic effects on the healing tissue. Uh, meaning that it can actually um, cause, cause some interference with the body's ability to heal itself to generate new tissue. It actually kills off that new tissue. So, um, not effective against bacteria and kills off new tissue, not a product we want to be using in wound care. I, I know this breaks the convention. I know that many of us uh, grew up believing that this is the thing that we're to be applying to our wounds. You get that nice frothy bubbling action. It feels like, wow, it must be effectively killing off the bacteria. Hate to tell you, it's not. Uh, studies have proven that it really is um, not effective at all. In, in fact, uh, long-term use can be harmful. So, remove this from your cabinet. Uh, remove it off, take it off the shelf entirely. Um, it really has no application. We don't use it in the hospitals. I've worked for several hospitals. Um, it is not used at all for that reason. Uh, can it remove stains from your clothing? Possibly. Um, in terms of the management of your wounds, uh, you do not want to be using that. However, there is a product that you can and may want to consider. This is Provodone Iodine. Um, unlike tincture of iodine or straight iodine concentrate, um, this is linked with a polymer called Provodone, so it provides for the slow release of iodine, which actually is effective at um, eliminating um, certain bacteria, both gram and gram positive and gram negative bacteria, as well as fungi from wounds. Um, it is far too concentrated in this form. This is 10%, which is the most common uh, concentration you will find of the solution form. There is a scrub version as well, which actually is harmful to wounds because it's too concentrated. So you want to make sure that if you do get this stuff, that you get it uh, in its most common uh, variation, which is the 10%, which still is too concentrated and has to be um, reduced further to a 1% concentration. So 10 parts of uh, sterile water, clean water added to this, to one part of this, uh, would yield a 1% concentration. Um, that's the, the concentration or the percentage of this particular product that you want to use uh, when it comes to wound care management. So like I was saying, uh, this is linked to a polymer called Provodone uh, that allows for this, the, the slow release of iodine as opposed to the rapid um, exposure of iodine that you may have if you used um, another product of iodine, say a tincture of iodine or something to that degree, which when introduced into a wound bed could be absorbed into the bloodstream quite readily and lead to uh, uh, certain toxic effects from that. Um, so we want to definitely avoid using other iodine products, which will kill off bacteria, but can, can also be very toxic to you if used. Um, also, if you have an iodine allergy, obviously a product such as this would not be um, appropriate. However, 
for those of us without the iodine allergy um, who want to use something um, that has been proven to be effective and also does not cause damage to the new um, granulation tissue. That is the new tissue that the body develops over time in terms of its ability, its attempt to heal itself. Um, this product can be used and has been shown to be effective. However, um, also, and it may be, you may find this strange, but it turns out that irrigating a wound with regular water, we're talking about sterile water, clean water, and in an austere environment, um, that may be difficult to find. But if you can find water that's visibly clean in terms of when you look at it, it appears to be clean. You boil that for 10 minutes, um, killing off any pathogens within that water, and use that solution once cooled to irrigate a wound. And just regular sterile water or clean water has been proven to be effective in eliminating some of that. When you irrigate the wound with that, eliminate some of the bacteria and the debris effectively and in the right circumstances, um, the body will be able to heal on its own without infection setting in. Now, I don't want to get into all the factors that lead to infection, but do realize this. Any open wound is considered to be contaminated. So that we are covered with bacteria on a regular basis, whether you just exited the shower or not, I hate to tell you. Um, chances are the bacteria, if not completely removed, depends on how much time you spend in the shower, I suppose, and how good a job you do scrubbing yourself. But Chances are you're going to still have the bacteria in your skin, and it's just a matter of time before it flourishes and it's all over your skin again. Now, it's different strains of bacteria that can affect um, the potential for infection. Um, some are more virulent, meaning that they can have a greater chance of causing disease or infection than others. Um, but there are many factors that come into play. The, the, your own overall health, uh, the health of your immune system, the type of bacteria it is, the potency of the virulency of that of bacteria, um, there, there may be the number or quantity of that bacteria within a wound, so on and so forth. I don't want to get too off topic on that, but do understand that any open wound is considered to be quote unquote contaminated. So what we're really attempting to do is to, to remove as much of the debris and the contamination in this case that we can um, and allow the body therefore to um, kind of regenerate new tissue and, and to heal on its own. So the most important thing to, to aid the body in its ability to do so is to keep the wound clean. Now initially, we want to be pretty aggressive with irrigating that wound and cleaning any debris that we can out of that wound. Um, the literature has, has basically um, demonstrated that, and depends on which study you want to look at, but about seven to eight PSIs with pounds per square inch of irrigant is the most effective to both remove the amount of bacteria as well as, and the debris, as well as not being so strong a stream of fluid that it's going to actually disrupt or, or uh, impede the development of new tissue, that's the healing tissue that is, the granulation tissue as we call it, that is filling in that wound. So how does one determine 7 to 8 PSIs of, of um, pressure? Well, it sounds a little crazy, but um, there is a way to do it. Uh, it is been proven that a 35 ml syringe, I purchased this online, um, so you too can, as well as a 19 gauge needle, which is what this is, and that's what I have a box of right here. So there's a lure lock, which is a small little screw, and on the syringe, the screw is directly on it, and there we have the needle, it's a 19 gauge needle in the end. The combination of that volume of syringe with that size needle yields the appropriate uh, pressure that will be effective in irrigating the wound properly and removing the bacteria from that wound, but not being so strong that it actually disrupts the new tissue that's developing. Now this is more of a, an important factor when it comes to uh, long-term management of that wound with irrigation. Initially, uh, it really doesn't matter what you're using, um, whether it be a 5cc, a 10cc, a 20cc, a 60cc syringe, whatever you have. Syringes are nice because you can control the stream of fluid. You can draw up a volume of fluid into it and deliver it. Now with steady, constant pressure with a 19 gauge needle, like I said, you get about 78 PSIs, which is, according to studies, the most effective stream. But if you don't have that, not a big deal. Just go ahead and find something similar and if you don't even have a syringe, you know, running a open wound underneath a faucet, um, if you had to, um, provide that the water coming out of the faucet is clean, you know it to be clean at least, 
will be effective as well. So things to consider with managing wounds, um, you can use something as simple as water, and in fact, if, if done properly, um, can be effective. Um, however, if infection sets in, or if you feel like you need to be a little more aggressive initially, um, and you have something like propadone iodine available, and you reduce this to a 1% concentration, this is a perfectly suitable frog to use as well. Um, especially if there is an infection that's set in, and you're able to at least treat that infection superficially with this. Um, hopefully you've caught it early, and something like this may be effective. Um, if not, you may need something like antibiotics to treat that infection if it gets deeper into the wound bed. Whole another topic, whole another discussion. Anyhow, I hope this was helpful and uh, again wish you all the best with your prepping.